So what animals did we get rid of? I know that's the burning question right now. One of them is gonna shock you. I know some of you may be heartbroken about that and it was a big decision on our part to make. We made it to Colorado. Uh, it's not the day that we had uh, hoped or planned for. Hey guys, good morning. It is a early morning. It is 3.40. Got a little uh, journey for you here. We're waiting on uh, Mud, oh, Marshall, a good friend of Marissa and mine. We're going on a little journey today and uh, taking the trailer. And there's Bison leaving the Ponderosa, leaving the ranch today. And I won't ever come back here uh, again. And we'll tell you who they are. It's going to be quite a surprise for you, but Marissa and I have made uh, some executive and tough decisions for our business um, and for our family, and uh, this is something we've been working on for a while and just been waiting on the right opportunity, and then sometimes uh, the opportunities come knocking, and so uh, here it is. Here's that opportunity. Um, Mud's coming here. He's going to hook up to the trailer. We're taking his rig. He's got the dually, Ford. It's gonna pull a little bit better than the, than the old feed truck. <laughs> so, we've got 15 hour drive, and it's me, Marissa, Mud, and Brooks. <laughs> Silky, you're not going. I know you're excited, but it's the four of us are going. So, hope you guys are excited to go on this journey with us. It's a big deal for Cross Timbers Bison, big deal for the Bakers. It's gonna be the longest journey that we've had pulling bison. So, we're so excited about where they're going and um, follow us along, guys. Shoo, 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 shoo. Shoo, 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 shoo. Shoo, 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 shoo. Shoo. Ha, 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 ha. Don't do that crap. All right, guys. We're loaded down and ready. Bye, Maya. See you, girl. All right. Mud's driving first. We're headed west. Well, hey guys, as you can see, scenery is a little bit different. We made it to Colorado. Uh, it's not the day that we had uh, hoped or planned for, um, but uh, here we are in uh, Salida. I guess that's how you say it. Maybe Salida, Salida, Colorado. Um, we are four hours short of our destination. And so um, we left at 5 a.m. this morning uh, to start our journey to a town called Paonia, P-A-O-N-I-A, -A, Colorado, to some people that uh, bought some bison from us um, was while we're leaving and while we're on this trip, it's going to be about a 14 or 15 hour drive. But within an hour or an hour and 10 minutes of leaving the ranch, we had a blowout. That was the first thing. We actually got it changed uh, with Mud having all of his tools and stuff ready and uh, we have two spare tires we changed the tire out in literally less than 10 minutes right off i-35 got back on so that was the first hiccup the second hiccup uh, we had stopped kind of somewhere in oklahoma and known uh, noticed the chemical on the something black that looks like it was leaking and getting all over mud's truck and a little bit on the trailer no big deal we were like oh maybe something's coming off another vehicle or whatever maybe it just a minor little oil leak mud just got his oil changed kept going uh then we stopped and we came through another little town kind of a funny name forgot the name of it got there and i said mud i smell something and i said it doesn't smell good doesn't smell like it's supposed to smell and uh 
I said I think there's smoke coming off the back of the truck, like near the exhaust. Pulled over and looked at the engine, uh, diesel engine. Uh, I don't know anything about diesel engines, but saw some oil kind of around the top of the motor, sort of leaking down in the engine. Not good, right? Well, we're out in the middle of nowhere, and so we drove to the next biggest town that uh, had an actual Ford dealership. We got to the Ford dealership, and uh, we got to the Ford dealership at a terrible time. We got to this town at a terrible time, Salida or Salida. All the stores were closing. Uh, there's not very many diesel mechanics here. Matter of fact, I don't think there is any diesel mechanics in this town. And then uh, the Ford dealership was closing and couldn't get mud truck in until Monday for the oil leak. Well, that's not good. This is Friday, and we're supposed to have our bison. We're supposed to have our bison at this place by about uh, our ETA was 8 p.m. So we started at 5 a.m. Supposed to get there at 8 p.m. Because from Oklahoma to Colorado, we also gained an hour from Central Time Zone to the Mountain Time Zone. Got here, got to this town, couldn't get anything done. Well, I had to call the gentleman that are buying the bison. They're only four hours away. I said, I'm really, really sorry to do this to you. But do you have a truck and a trailer to come get these bison? And they said, yes. So here's what we did. And we made a plan. Here's what we did. Well, now this is one of my favorite places. I love Colorado. The Rocky Mountains are right here. Sun setting. It's beautiful. Got the, the Arkansas River right here. Absolutely gorgeous. What we did was we met some people at the dealership. Super nice lady. Got us hooked up. There is a place here that is a local processor uh, that actually processes bison. Now, I know you guys are going, what? There were no animals there, and they gave us a facility and let us use some of their pens to unload our animals, our seven, in their pens, get them off the trailer, and get them some fresh water. Oh, yeah, especially with Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These guys were wild and shit. Oh, really? And big, on a big ranch or big open? Yeah, yeah it's pretty good size. I mean, Ours are pretty calm, I'd say. Over there. He's good. He still has... It's gonna come to me on the to Marissa. Yes, sir. It comes this way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kenny. Okay. So that's what's happened. Uh, they're there right now. We're waiting on the two guys that are buying uh, some of our bison. Uh, we'll let you know which bison it is. Uh, kind of some big decisions have been been made between Marissa and I, and Brooks, of course. Uh, she had a little, she had an opinion in this whole uh, sale. So it's sad because we didn't get to go to their property. We want to see their place and let the bison go. That's not gonna happen. Maybe in the future we can go see their place and see our former bison. But right now we're gonna go meet them at the processor. We're, we just had some dinner, let Brooks see the river. And uh, we're gonna go meet them at this processing company locally here. And then uh, we're gonna get them loaded out and get them to their new home. So, and then we're gonna stay here tonight, recoup, kind of get a plan and we're gonna head back tomorrow. And you're like, how are you supposed to drive that thing home? We kind of have a plan. Don't know how it's going to go, but we will see. So anyways, all right. 
we gotta go load these bison up. I'm excited for these guys. They're getting some good bison. We came down here and we stayed at Angel Fire in New Mexico. Kind of broke up our trip a little bit. Kind of what we decided to do is pedal the truck back basically with the oil ish we have. Um, we may know what it is now, but uh, we just came down here, relaxed a little bit, broke up the trip um, here in Angel Fire and uh, had a little bite to eat last night and hung out, enjoyed the pretty view. Uh, Marissa and I are big fans of the mountains, uh, love the mountain ranges. And so, Anyways, we are headed home now, back to Oklahoma. We've got about a nine hour trip home from Angel Fire. So we're headed back east. We'll get back to the Ponderosa and I can't wait to see all of our animals and make sure that everything's okay. Well, we made it back home safely. Uh, luckily, uh, we did drive a MUDS truck all the way back. We did have somebody look at it before we left uh, Salida, and it looked like what initially we thought was the turbo. There was some oil leaking from the turbo. Don't get me started on talking about mechanical stuff, especially diesel engine. Not my deal, first to admit. But we bought a bunch of oil. We uh, stopped at Angel Fire, had a great time there. Brooks and Mud and Marissa and I took the ski lift all the way up on, uh, I think that was the Chili uh, ski lift there at Angel Fire, beautiful place. We went ahead and made a little trip out of it and tried to enjoy uh, some of it. A little unfortunate that we didn't make it all the way uh, to the new owner's property. So they're outside, just out kind of northwest of the Gunnison area, if you know where Gunnison is. So I know, here's the question. You wanna know who all went. Well, basically, what we did is Marissa and I are trying to lower our carrying capacity, lower our stocking right here at the Ponderosa and had a lot of good feedback from people talking about they understand why we had to sell animals and why we had to pull our numbers back. Guys, we still need to pull our numbers back. We still have a ways to go. Um, we are thinking maybe around about 15 to 20 animals. We still have 27 out in the big joe herd these are our yearlings our 2023 calves from last year yearlings now but we still need to reduce our size some so what animals did we get rid of i know that's the burning question right now well one of them is gonna shock you and uh one of them is hoss i know some of you may be heartbroken about that and it was a big decision on our part to make we just made a choice to reduce down to one herd bull it was a hard decision we had to make and uh me and brooks and marissa decided to do that it was definitely not the easiest decision uh to make but uh we sold hoss we sold two or three south dakota females and then two or three of our wolverine females and then we also sold uh one cow crazy eyes the 32 cal uh we sold her as well and uh i'm so excited for james and jack for them to start their own herd and what uh, what a fun deal to be a part of that situation for marissa and i to take animals from the ponderosa uh, that we've kind of raised up a little bit and get them to colorado you know those guys get to start their own herd those will be their foundation animals forever and they're getting a heck of a bull out of hoss what a stud he is 
and he's gonna do great for them. What a great starter bull, great foundation of animals, and I couldn't be more excited for Jack and James and their family, their journey of raising the American bison. They're gonna keep us updated and everything. They've already sent us videos of Haas and the females. We'll show you guys some of that footage and give you an update on their progress and how they're starting. And I'm um, so excited and pumped for them. And Marissa and I and Brooks are lucky to be a part of this little situation and get somebody going raising the American bison just from uh, you know, those guys watching this channel and uh, kind of following our journey and experiences along the ups and downs of raising bison. As far as breeding goes for Big Joe, what's going to happen now is he can breed, you know, bison, the ratio can vary uh, depending on region, uh, your environment, animals, all sorts of those tangibles go into the situation. But uh, typically, Every rancher is different, but some of them feel more comfortable than others. Depends on how good your breed bull is. But those bulls can breed, you know, one bull per 15, 20, 25, 30. I mean, up to 40 cows I've even heard of that ratio of bull to female. So that's a bit stretched for me. I feel a little bit more comfortable with one bull per 15 or 20 just for us here. And that's the size of the herd that we need to get down to. Will we get another young breeding bull to make, uh, you know, try to push Big Joe and, and be the next guy? Maybe so. I don't know that. We'll see. Um, we may want to switch up our genetics. The good thing is, don't forget, Haas and Dunbar were together last year, and there's a good chance that some of our 2024 calves have Big Joe, Dunbar, and Haas genetics all in that herd and we've got 18 red dogs for 2024 that's exciting so don't forget we've got hoss genetics matter of fact there's i think two hoss babies in here that were some late bloomers from that young herd anyways so uh hope you guys understand a little bit more uh it's a business decision it's a ranching and farming decision for our family and we just saw an opportunity to reduce our herd and we took that opportunity and um so excited, um, happy, and fortunate James and Jack, um, both business partners and starting this ranch together with their families and uh, pretty cool to be a part of that situation. Thank you guys for watching us. We'll keep on bison ranching.